he'll be um, monitoring that. But first of all, we'll hear a recap from Miranda. Okay, thanks. Um, thanks very much uh, for, uh, for, for yesterday, really. Um, it was quite amazing to hear from everybody. And so we thought it would be helpful, though, for those who are starting new to, um, to provide a bit of a, an overview of the themes that came out from the conference yesterday. And then I also wanted to project a little bit into the future to, um, to think about, well, what, what could happen after this? So I'd like to start with the reflection um, that it's tremendously encouraging to see the range of dedicated people who have been working on this issue for so many years. So we saw how many different people have contributed in different ways um, to addressing SARV in the country. And the strongest theme that really came across for me um, was the need for everyone, civil society, faith-based organisations, individuals, government, community leaders and so forth to, to work together. And there really seemed to be this widespread recognition um, that SARV cannot be addressed alone um, and we really need a collective and mutually supportive approach. People in particular were referencing the role of community police and human rights defenders either as individuals or as um, uh, you know, organisations like uh, Voice for Change and the others um, that, that um, Sarah Chapeau was talking about that Oxfam supports. Um, these were really seen as being vital, connected um, organisations in that regard. But clearly, I think a lot of people also identified the fact that there is a need for greater connection between the top levels of government and the, the village level. So often that there was a, a reference to that feeling of disconnect between what's happening at the government and then what's happening at the, at the grassroots. So we can identify a need for better linkages. And I think this led to another point um, that in fact, uh, Dr. Hokula made, um, which is the value of learning from and building upon those linkages and collaborations that are already in place um, between the police, the community and village courts. And we heard some examples of those um, and clearly there is a need for much more of these. We also heard about the fact that uh, education and awareness is really vitally important, but it can't be an approach um, of just telling people what to think. Instead, communities and individuals must be supported to find their own way to engage in critical consideration of assumptions about sorcery as causal explanations of misfortune. Uh, I think that the problem of making assumptions, of jumping to conclusions, was something that a number of speakers um, really identified. And we heard some great examples from India and from Sub-Saharan Africa about how communities were working together to, um, to think about explanations for death and for um, illness, for example. We also heard that in many ways, the churches are part of the problem and part of the solution. So we heard about the dangers of prayer warriors confirming that children are really witches in Africa, for example. Um, and in Papua New Guinea, the problematic role of the glass man and the glass Mary was also spoken about. Um, and we know that sometimes these individuals declare themselves to be prayer warriors and Christians. So we're going to be hearing a lot more about the role of the, the churches and the positive work that a lot of them are doing um, in the panel today. So I'm personally really looking forward to that. Uh, another theme was the failure of the health systems um, to both to prevent um, you know, illness and death, but also of healthcare professionals to explain death and illness in ways that are accepted by communities. And there was a, there was a great suggestion um, that in addition to a medical certificate, family members be encouraged to talk to the community uh, about the stages of the person's illness so that it's not seen as something sudden and unexpected, 
but as an ongoing process with, um, with natural causes. We saw that um, reintegration is incredibly difficult uh, to achieve. And again, that it requires an enormous uh, input of resources um, and some incredible individuals we heard from who are really, uh, you know, have dedicated years and their own personal resources to, um, to achieving community reintegration. And this, I think, really highlights the fact that often the victims of, um, of SAV are not just the individuals who are identified um, and accused, but their families and often the entire community is ruptured. Uh, interestingly for me as a lawyer, we saw that the law can play uh, a really valuable role in addressing SARS, but it needs to be much more widely known. Um, and instruments such as protection orders need to be more broadly accessible um, because they do seem to be effective when they're combined with other forms of um, network and support. The issue of safety, um, both physical and mental health wise of survivors and those who support them is of paramount concern and needs to be addressed. And we all, um, I think, recognize that, that possibly not enough um, attention has been paid to the, um, the cumulative impact that working with such traumatic cases can have on individuals. Uh, the role of um, social media to empower us, I think also came across. Um, and, you know, even this conference shows that we don't need necessarily to all be in the same place um, in, order to, in order to be connected. And um, uh, um, Father Philip told me that, you know, uh, Betty Coco, who is going to be joining us later, had called him afterwards from Enger, saying that she and her girls had watched the whole thing, you know, right from the from the back of Enger. So that's, I think that's really exciting and really encouraging because we've seen some problematic uses of social media with in regard to SAR, but there's also the potential for really positive uses of it. Um, and finally, I think we saw that SAR in PNG is actually a global problem that is shared in many countries um, around the world. They're really struggling with, um, with similar issues. And so we can learn from them and we can take support from them. And we can also share our experiences and, and give support back. And even as um, Leo Igwe spoke about, you know, the United Nations could step up and, and play an important role here. Uh, so just to conclude that, I've recently been thinking about um, SAV as a bit of a wildfire that can spread from place to place if not checked. And I have to say that this was a metaphor that um, Chief Inspector Neely used many years ago. Um, and the more I think about it, the more I think that it's very, it's very true because you know, we can see this landscape that develops where there are tensions and jealousies. And then we have um, a trigger event, which is like an ignition where somebody dies or somebody is sick and an accusation comes out. We can think about those individuals who, who really fan the flames or pour fuel on the fire, like the glass man um, or the glass Mary. Um, and then we can also think about the enormous destruction that can come when it gets out of control, whole communities are impacted. But the thing about the wildfire is also that there are lots of ways to intervene and to stop that wildfire, you know, from taking hold in the first place. And, you know, we often see um, those people like human rights defenders who are there, you know, putting out the flames in there with their water pumps, um, rescuing people, um, taking them to safety. We see um, officers like, um, you know, we've, we've heard from Chief Inspector Neely yesterday, and we're going to hear um, from uh, Inspector Peter Lowry today about 
you know, they go and they do prevention. And in a way, it's like a fire safety plan to pull um, communities together to try to ensure that these flames do not take hold, that they don't get out of control. And we'll hear as well today what the, um, what the churches and what the government in particular is doing in terms of both prevention and response. So I want to ask you, um, all of the participants today, you know, who else could contribute to preventing the SAV wildfire or in responding better to its damage and destruction? What do we want to see happen next after this conference? Uh, what are the, the priorities for action? And, you know, how do you think they can best be achieved? Are the existing structures that we've got working well enough? Um, or do we need some new kinds of steering direction, steering organization? Um, you know, what, what thoughts do you all have about that? I wanted to propose that um, one thing we, we get out of this conference is a summary that we could give to the um, the standing committee, so the, the committee on gender-based violence that, that's currently being led um, by Chairman Charles Abel uh, about just identifying some of the key priorities that we think need to be addressed um, to go towards preventing uh, SARS. So I'm wondering if you could all uh, participate in some joint brainstorming about this. I was thinking that we could use the, um, the chat function to do that. And um, maybe we could, I'll, I'll suggest a, a hashtag that we could use so that everyone can identify when they're thinking about future directions. And, um, and of course, we would share that document with everybody um, present. So that was, um, that was my recap. Um, uh, Philip, that, that went maybe a little bit backwards, but then also into the future. And, um, and let's just, let's keep that conversation happening uh, throughout the day. Thank you.